Hi there. Welcome to a late night breakfast in my kitchen here. And I do apologize that this video is a little less fancy than some of the other ones you've seen on this channel. Uh, I recently had a hard disk crash on my computer, unfortunately, and so that means it's time to uh, upgrade. <laughs> Uh, it looks like I'm going to be able to uh, recover all of my uh, videos and files and everything. But in the meantime, there's been a bit of a uh, gap. So I'm filling this in with a uh, quickie video inspired by a uh, good friend of mine who uh, really likes to bake. And she uh, introduced me to something completely obvious that, strangely enough, I'd never considered it until she made it for me. You see, the art of making homemade oatmeal seems to uh, have become a lost art because all we ever use are those little instant packets. But if you have ever tried homemade oatmeal, as I recently have, then you'll realize that this stuff simply blows those homemade pack those uh, instant packets out of the water. <laughs> and it's uh, really simple to do and probably takes less than 10 minutes from beginning to end. What we have here is a number six or nine inch sized vintage Griswold cast iron skillet, which I've been heating on just a tad under medium, which is certainly hot enough to uh, saute about a cup and a half of uh, sliced or chopped Granny Smith apples. And so, notice the pan is dry right now, but that's about to change. Feed these apples first. Let's add a little liquid, and it's been suggested that I add, of all things, lemon juice. Let's take that. will help to bring out the flavor of the apple. There we go. Now that we've already introduced something cold to the pan and lowered the temperature a little bit. You can add a little butter to the mix. There we go. And it's just a matter of sauteing these apples until they become nice and soft. Probably just around al dente. Which will really only take a couple of minutes. However, that's why I'm using Granny Smith apples, because they still hold some firmness, even if, when they're cooked. That's why I don't like using Red Delicious apples. Those things are terrible. They're too sweet, they turn into mush, and they get moldy much too fast. So this will probably add Maybe, maybe a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. You mix it in and make a syrup.
Here's the part where we have to uh, do like a stir fry to keep the apples and also the sugar from burning. My friend's looking over my shoulder, actually. No, oh, no worries, no worries. I'm not talking about you behind your back. Oh, no. yeah. The apples are still a little firm, yes. We do have to do this maybe a couple more minutes yet to, so to soften them. I just say a little longer. Oh, that's true, especially Granny Smith. Yeah, it's probably about seven, eight minutes. All right, well, we will take our time. As she noted, just have a little patience. As I mentioned, my computer has had something, uh, had a hard disk crash recently. <laughs> it was going on about seven to eight years old, and it was a refurb, so I'd say it was probably time to uh, upgrade it anyway. It had maxed out on eight gigabytes of RAM, and I wasn't able to extend it anymore anyways, and Windows 10 seems to, take, seems to do better with at least <laughs> probably 12 to 16 gigs. Welcome to the 21st century. Boy, I remember back when <laughs> computer memory was so small that everyone got excited when RAM broke the 640K barrier and actually reached one megabyte of RAM. I think that was somewhere around Windows 3.1. <laughs> does look like the apples are beginning to shrink, so I'd say we are getting close. Again, this was about a cup and a half of uh, apple, sliced apples. That was two, well, one and a half small Granny Smith apples. Probably it would be the same as one large Granny Smith apple. With maybe a couple of tablespoons of butter, a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice to bring it out. apples now we will add only a touch we'll add more later just a touch of cinnamon like I said more later this poor friends as well, a little ginger, but only a touch, like so. Some folks would add nutmeg, but I'm not a fan of adding nutmeg to apples, only because it tends to make it taste like pumpkin pie, and I would rather have something that tastes like apples. I believe we are 
we're getting close at this point. So yeah, this is shrinking. We're probably about ready. Let's grab a fork and be sure. Oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, these apples are now definitely fork tender. No problem at all there. I think I'll give it just another few seconds. Appreciate your patience. ready at this point for the next step. So here it comes. The oats. And to this we will quickly add of water. It's just a matter of stirring and reducing it. If you hear the background noise, this is why you can see why I regret not having the capability yet of editing these videos. <laughs> but the next one will be. Nonetheless, if you're watching this on YouTube, as you probably are, you can always fast forward. Even so, we are almost done already. Because, as has been pointed out, milk cooks down very quickly. Also, I have to be sure not to burn it. and why those instant packets are so popular is because of the convenience. It only takes, after all, maybe about two minutes to have a package of oatmeal. But when you smell this cooking, you'll realize there is indeed a difference. And this is still something you could make in the morning or even on a weekend or even at night like I'm doing now. I do believe it's already starting to reduce. This actually reminds me of the times made dulce de leche, which consisted of stirring milk and sugar for two whole hours. You had to stir it non-stop or else the milk would again burn. However, as you can see, the oats are absorbing the liquid. 
it is definitely reducing. And you can see how exciting my life is. Here it is late Friday night and I am having an exciting time stirring oatmeal in a vintage cast iron frying pan. Still the end result will be worth it. Not yet, but it's getting close. Besides, I find this very relaxing right now. Hope this doesn't put you to sleep. <laughs> we are starting to get some thick consistency at this point. You can see how the spoon is making little trails across, so it's definitely thickening, probably close to the right point, depending on how thick you like your oatmeal. Just a bit of salt. Oh yeah, you can see it's definitely thickening. It's alive, it's alive. So we're probably at just about the right thickness for serving right now. So let's top it off with just a little bit more sweetness. A little more brown sugar. Just a touch more cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is so sinful, sinfully good. to top all of this off, I think I'll we'll add a secret ingredient.
just a touch of ground cardamom, but only a bit. Turning off the heat now. It's certainly hot enough. We can just let this stir in its own or simmer because guess what? We are ready to serve. And here we have, courtesy of my friend who calls herself Jamie, that is J-Me, homemade apple cinnamon oatmeal in a cast iron pan. <laughs> This certainly beats the heck out of those instant oatmeal packets. You may want to give this a try yourself and see how you like it. Please feel free to post your comments below. I mean, we love hearing from you. I love hearing you. Everybody does. Thank you very much, everyone. And see you real soon with a better edited video.